Hello everyone. I'm live right now. It's Nicole Steele of the Joyful Stamper. I'm just getting everything situated. Um, let's see, so how's everyone doing? Marja, okay. Ooh, it's a fine Thursday morning here in the Steele household. Lots of activity like normal. All right, I have the screen up. I've got the comments up. So if you're here, speak to me. Speak to me, except you know what? I got to turn my lights on. That would help, wouldn't it? Okay, let me check. Oh, that thing, that looks good. Okay, it helps to be able to see. So, oh my gosh, I am so excited to be back, you guys. It's been two weeks since I've done a live. So if you are joining me live, welcome. If you're watching the replay, welcome. I love all the views. And I'm Nicole Steele of The Joyful Stamper. And I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. So, which means I love to stamp. I love to build my team. And I love Stampin' Up! products. So, um, okay. So what we're doing today we're going to do this scrappy strip technique, which I discovered when I saw uh, Kylie Bertucci, an Australian Stampin' Up! demonstrator, did this, and her husband did too. And I thought, oh my goodness, what a great way to use up paper scraps, right? Because I have baskets of them and page protectors full of them. And if you've been a stamper for a while, I'm sure you do too. And we're going to do this one. Oh my gosh, I love the bright colors of this. And can you see the sparkle I added to the umbrellas? Oh yeah, lots of prettiness going on there. So we're gonna make both of these today. I have some tips for lining those up. Um, so before we do that though, I got some cards in the mail. I love showing the handmade cards that other people sent me because you know what? Everybody has their own card making style and you know, sometimes it's like, I try to switch things up, but it's nice to see what other people do too. You know what? And not to mention, I absolutely adore getting handmade cards in the mail. So if you want to send me a card, P or private message me and I'll send you my address. But this first one, this is from a sweet girl that my daughter Caitlin brought on vacation with us last month. And this is retired Stampin' Up! paper, this daisy one. And this one, I forget what it's called, Carnival and Carousel or something. But she wrote me a thank you note. She used a little retired doily too. And she wrote on the back of it and oh my gosh I just I love getting this and I have a sideboard in our home that I display all my handmade cards on and then this one is from my mom it, and it was for Brian and um, my anniversary so wedding anniversary so we were married 22 years and my mom made this and she actually made this as part of my mystery stamping hour from last month I think or two months ago but then she turned around and she sent it to me. So I just, I like these little butterflies and I love the spring colors. These are retired colors, but you know what? I still remember them. Certainly celery, apricot appeal. Okay, that one I'm stumped on. It might be blushing bride, but I just, I love the spring colors of this. So there's a thinking of you card. And then this one is from Sharon Rowland. She plays along with my mystery stamping hour. And she made this with my last one and she mailed it to me. I was so excited to get it, especially since I did not get this paper out of the annual catalog. So I was able to see it up close and in person, but look at those little tiny dragonflies. I love the size of them. And I like these little schools of fish and how she has them going in different directions. And this paper, this paper reminds me of Finding Nemo. Did you guys ever see that movie? Make sure you're commenting. So we can have this conversation and talk about this stuff, right? Because it's fun. And then we did a little zig whoop, we did a little zigzag ribbon technique on my mystery stamping hour. So just oh my gosh, I just I love this. I was excited to get that. And then this card. Um, I have a friend that lives up in Boston, Judy, and she loves vintage. She has a very sweet, soft vintage style and she's exceptionally creative. She can make something beautiful out of nothing. And she sent me this really sweet card and put a little artificial flower up in the corner with some ribbon and the music paper totally stole my heart. And she, I think she stamped these papers too. And 
put them all together and just really made a pretty card. I love the vintage vibe to this one. Then, I don't know if you guys watched the one where my sweet niece, Cora, stamped with me about a month ago and we made this pineapple card that featured the five new in colors. Well, her birthday was recently, her eighth birthday, and she took this card, look at this, she crossed out happy birthday and wrote thank you, because she sent it as a thank you for the birthday gift we sent her. Oh, that was adorable. Totally melted my heart. I'm so flattered that she sent me the card that she made. So I have this on display too. Then the last card I've gotten recently is also from my mom and she was thanking us for the wonderful time her and my dad had on vacation with us because we all went together. And this is a card from actually a recent paper pumpkin kit. So she signs, she signs the back of the card. Do you guys sign the back of your handmade cards? I actually, hi Kim. I actually have went and bought Avery address labels and I made up a template on Avery.com and it has my name on it and my website and my email address and I stick them at the bottom of all of my cards um, because, well first of all, I mean when you make it you want to sign it, right? You're the artist. But also too, I do sell my handmade cards so um, and I've had people ask me to buy them from those little labels they saw on the back of the cards. So always remember, sign, sign your work, sign your work of art. So this is from my mom and dad. It's a paper pumpkin kit. Look at that gold foil die cut. Isn't that pretty? There's something similar to these in the annual catalog. The Forever Greenery um, laser cut, I think they're called, gold foil dies. But this is pretty similar to them. So you actually could get something like this in the annual catalog. So I love Happy Mail. If you want to send me a card, I welcome it. And I will show it on my live. So the other thing that is big news with me I'm having a BOGO sale of my retired products. It's going to start next Thursday, August 6th, and it's going to run Thursday, Friday, and end Saturday, August 8th. Tomorrow on my blog, thejoyfulstamper.com, I am putting a post up with all the details of this sale. But the gist of it is that starting August 6th, for running for these three days, whatever amount that you order in my store, um, shop with Nicole.stampinup.net. You can pick an equivalent amount of my retired product for free. All you have to do is pay the shipping uh, of the retired product to you. And I'm going to do that with priority mail flat rate just to keep it really simple. So that's all going to happen on my Facebook page, which you're on right now if you're watching this. Um, but this, I, I think this is going to be really popular. And I'm really sad. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to, I'm sad to part with my retired product. But I need to, I need to, and I know they will go to happy homes. So if you were looking to score some deals and some things you didn't get in previous catalogs, because it's going to be more than just the previous catalogs, um, I'm going to go back probably like a good year or two with my retired product. There'll be ribbons, embellishments, paper, of course, stamp sets. So buy one, get one free. And you can order from the holiday mini catalog. So order from the mini catalog, which is, goes live on August 4th, but Order from it August 6th through 8th, and you can pick an equivalent amount of my retired product for free. So, pretty good deal. Um, so, that'll be on my blog tomorrow, all the details of that. Hi, Sharon. Yes, good morning to you, too. And we are well. I hope you are, too. I just showed your card that you sent me. This one right here. <laughs> because I'm just in love with these cute little images in the paper. So, thank you for sending that to me. Okay, well, let's get started with the stamping because I'm assuming that's why you're here, right? We're going to start with this card right here because it's the one that's sitting in front of me. All right, so let me pull out my little paper pack here. I always like to have the pieces ready to go. I try to stay organized. Try to stay organized. That's, that's the key word here. Okay. And this is Magenta Madness. I know a lot of people that at first were like, whoa, that's bright. That's super bright. But I have found it actually looks really good when paired with other colors. And I'm normally not a really bright person, but I've really been enjoying this. I've been using it a lot. So this is five and a half inches by eight and a half inches. Score down the middle at four and a quarter. And again, I'm going to have the project sheet with all the measurements in the description to this video when it's done and I'm putting it on my blog too. 
So you don't have to worry about braiding anything down. Okay, so then I cut a piece of Magenta Madness uh, paper from the In Color Designer Series paper stack and I cut it to five and a quarter inches by four inches. But look at this. You get all these patterns. Isn't that all that color pretty? I love it. I can tell I've already used quite a bit of it. So this um, is going to go on here, but I'm not going to glue it down yet because there are certain things we need to do to this to get our card to work. So what I'm going to do first is stamp some umbrellas. Let me set this aside. So we've got Coastal Cabana and we've got Pool Party and Granny Apple Green. And these are just paper scraps. We're using this set right here under my umbrella. It has this punch I'm going to use that coordinates with it because we're going to punch the umbrellas out. But I just, I love coloring these images. They're, they've been really fun to use with my stamp and blends. So let's pull out this umbrella and we've got the handle and I'm going to use the same color ink as my cardstock. So let's start with the lightest one, which would be pool party right here. I feel like I have not stamped in an eternity because I've been going on college tours and we've been shopping for formal wear dresses and it's just been a wild time here in the steel household. And then I'm going to stamp the handle. So as far as formal wear shopping goes, and then I'm going to clean my stamp in between because I'm switching up colors. So yeah, I started with the lightest color, but I still don't want to go and pick up a new color in my ink pad. Okay, so we'll close that. So yeah, we found out. So our, their school has the prom tonight. So we went formal dress shopping. And Macy's, because of all the proms being canceled, had all their dresses marked down to $30. $30. These are dresses that cost a few hundred dollars. So since we have three years left of high school um, between my younger two, this is Coastal Cabana now that I'm stamping on Coastal Cabana cardstock. We, I told them, I said, you know what? Buy your dresses for until you graduate. Because at these prices, we cannot pass these up. So... <laughs> That was good. I got such a good deal on that because we did get a ton of formal dresses. The sad news is, is that my days of formal dress shopping with my daughters might be over. But there's always wedding dresses, right? <laughs> I know people are probably like, what? They're still in high school and college. Well, I got married five months out of college. So you never know. You never know. Now we're going to do Granny Apple Green. Have you guys ever gotten a super good bargain on clothes? Like really good. Like we bought a $300 dress for $19.93 on Tuesday, that kind of deal. This is Granny Apple Green on Granny Apple Green cardstock. And we're gonna do handle. Now I may have to re-stamp these again just in case, or if my punch doesn't line up right with my images but I think it's gonna be okay so now we're gonna punch all these out uh well I can do the handle here we go so I can do this and we'll just have to trim the cardstock down to get to the umbrella okay yeah I, I like the builder punches because you can punch out three different things but what I don't like about them is you have to be very aware of where you are stamping your images on your cardstock because you might not be able to reach them with the punch. Like this one, I'm having a little bit of trouble because my paper, I think, needs cut down just a hair. Just a hair. Okay, let's try that again. Here we go. Oh, no. There. Got it lined up. Don't want to lose those little umbrellas. Okay, now I think what I'm going to have to do is trim away these little umbrella handles. I should have punched them or stamped them in the opposite order so I could have reached the umbrella, but it'll work. It's what we got scissors for, right? So the thing with these li lives, lives, 
is you get to see the full creative process, right? You get to see that cards don't just happen here in the Dorsal Stamper Studio. They take a little bit of fussing and a little bit of trial and error. But eventually, we make something pretty. Okay. I'll tell you what else there's been a lot of going on around here is baking. Lots and lots of baking. Like my daughter, my oldest, Emma, she made a flourless chocolate cake for us this week. And then last night, my youngest, Elena, she made us chocolate chip cookies. And then my other daughter, Caitlin, she convinced me that because Ben and Jerry pints were on sale, uh, we should get some. One for everyone. And we did. <laughs> Hi, Joanne. So we had Ben and Jerry's and chocolate chip and cookies last night. Okay, now this piece of Whisper White cardstock is four and a quarter inches by two inches. And you'll see, I die, I use the layering circles dies right here, and I use this small one right here to die cut these three circles. But I want to make sure that they all fit on this piece, and I don't want to have to waste a bunch of this cardstock by a lot of trial and error. So what I did is I took a piece of, you know, copy paper and I die cut three circles using the die. And then what I did is I go ahead and I just, I laid them on my cardstock here where I, to just to space them out. And once I had them where I wanted them to be, then I went ahead and I die cut it. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna bring my trusty cuddle bug here into the camera and August 4th is when demonstrators can order the new Stampin' Cut and Emboss die cutting machine. I have a gazillion bonus day coupons from my holiday catalog pre-order and so that's what I'm going to get. And then September 1st it's going to go live for everybody else, for all the customers. Okay so I have my little scrap circles placed and then I'm going to take my die and I'm just going to place it right over that circle. Now you also could trace it with a pencil and then remove those circles, but I don't feel like erasing pencil lines. So I'm just doing it this way. Okay, so we got that cut out. And now we have the second circle right there. And remember, this is all just to make sure we get our circles fairly evenly spaced. You don't have to stress over it. We don't need perfection because if it's perfect, it loses the charm of being handmade. Now I took that last circle off because I've already got those two die cuts so I can now see where to put my third circle. And we'll run this through. Okay. And we've got it. Put my, I gotta, gotta put my die back because I will lose it. I will lose it. Oh, thanks, Sharon. I'm glad you liked it. And I think my paper got crooked, so straighten it there. Okay. So now we've die cut that. And you can see sometimes that's those little pieces there. That's just the scraps for me die cutting over those scrap circles. Okay, and you can use either side of it. I know some people, they don't like that little indentation that sometimes the dies make. It's Sometimes it doesn't bother me, but in this case, it's just as easy to flip it over and use the other side. So we can go ahead and do that. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to start assembling everything and we have to stamp our sentiment here. So let me think what we're going to do. Okay, this is going to get put on here with dimensionals. We want to pop that up. So let's add them. And I'm going to be quite liberal with them because I really, really don't want this piece to sag. So don't be shy in putting them on. My friend, Linda, probably would put a lot more on than I'm even putting on here. She loves dimensionals. She's the queen of covering her cardstock with them. So, and I'm going to I'm laying this out on my card base just for placement and I'm going to put it off to the left a little bit. Whoop. Fix that. It's curling. Okay. 
So we got that. And now I'm going to go ahead and stamp that sentiment there before I start adding more embellishments. And the one I'm using is Life's Showers Bring Love's Flowers. I like that one because I can use it for a variety of different things. So what I find, actually guys, I want to get your opinion on this. A lot of people prefer straightforward sentiments. Happy birthday, thinking of you, thank you, uh, the like, and the like. They like those ones. I like to use quotes and other different sayings because I figure even with a quote, I can use the card for whatever. So what do you guys do? Do you tend to use straight up sentiments like the happy birthday, thinking of you, or do you like to use a variety of quotes and different ways of saying things? I'm just curious. I think this is a little bit crooked, but that's okay. We're going to stay with it. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I still don't have this glued down because now I'm going to glue around there some magenta madness ribbon. Now remember, this is lifted up. This piece here is lifted up on Stampin' Dimensionals. So what I can actually do is I'm going to slide this ribbon underneath there, and I'm going to pull it up through that circle because I want to tie my bow right here on top of that whisper white piece. Then I'm going to wrap my ribbon around my designer series paper piece. And now I'm going to go ahead and tie it in a bow. And I didn't cut the ribbon off my ribbon spool yet because I don't want to waste my ribbon. So I will trim it after I've already tied it in a bow. Because sometimes I measure too short or I measure too long. And ribbon's precious, man. Our stamping supplies are precious. I don't want to waste them. Now, if it's for a class, I, I tie, I measure them out ahead of time, but I don't need to do that when I'm making this right here in my, for myself right now. Okay. Oh my gosh. I like that bow. Do you ever get excited when you tie a good bow on the first try? It's like a miracle. Oh, it depends on who you're sending it to Sharon. Yeah. Yeah. You're right about that. I do have people that would prefer the more straight up happy birthday because it's like, I know what you're sending me this card for. I don't have to try to guess. So they just want to know. All right. Now we're going to add. So you see how I did that ribbon? I could have tied, just ran it all the way through underneath and tied it over here, but I felt like it was going to get a little bit too crowded and I didn't want to really hide that much of the ribbon. So that's why I brought it up through that circle and it's sitting on top of the whisper white frame. So these, I call this the peekable peekaboo cubby hole card because they do, they look like cubby holes and you can make your pieces peek out of them. So for instance, the zany zebra set, I think would look cute to have your little zebras there with a little party hat on. I'm doing the umbrellas um, and I'm going to scatter them around there. So now we're going to put those on and the umbrellas I'm definitely using dimensionals, but here's the thing. You can see part of them are going to be sitting on the Whisper White cardstock, and part of them are going to be sort of sitting over top of that circle hole. I want to put the dimensional on the part of the umbrella that is going to be sitting over this recessed area. So when you, that's why you want to lay them out first. I'm going to adjust this ribbon here a little bit. That's why you want to lay them out first so that you know where you want to put them. And I learned this tip from my Stampin' Up! team leader. She studied graphic design and she said, start with your lightest colors at, to at the top and work down to the darker colors because that way it doesn't look so heavy. I didn't take graphic design. I don't come by this naturally. I'm just a person that really enjoys playing with paper stamps and ink. That's it. Sometimes I make some truly ugly cards because of that. Sometimes I make cards that make me do cartwheels. But whatever the case, it's just, I'm having fun with it. But this is not stamping on my paper, be staying on my paper because I stamped on the ribbon or put on the ribbon. Okay, we got it. That's good. Now, what do we do with those? Well, we're going to grab our fine tip glue pen if I can open the lid because it hasn't glued shut. There we go. It really glued shut on me the other day and I had to take my paper piercer and sort of poke around it to loosen all the crusted up glue on there. Now this part, 
Um, oh, you know what I was, no. No, 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 no. You know what I was going to do? Actually, I did in my original card. I attached those with glue dots before I stuck these to my card. So let's see if we can gently peel these off. See, I told you it's all trial and error here in the Joyful Stamper Studio. But please tell me you can relate. Okay, we're gonna attach these with glue dots. So what I'm gonna do is take my handle and the top part of the side that I stamped on is going to get a glue dot stuck to it because then I'm going to tuck it underneath my um, umbrella like that. Okay, and do the next one. So I'm putting it stamped side down onto the glue dot. And oh, this is Coastal Cabana. So we want that one to go there. And then we have Pool Party. It feels so good to stamp again. Have you guys ever taken like a stamping vacation, whether just out of personal choice or necessity? I think it actually helps with creativity to take a little break every now and then. Refreshes the creative soul. Okay. Now we're good. Now, if you find that your little handles are a little bit too floppy, that's where I used the fine tip glue pen to just dab a little bit of glue on. Yeah, I mean, I find that you can put a block on top of it to kind of set it. I find like stamping every day. Oh, hello, Jim. I find that stamping every day does help with creativity. You get into the swing of it, you get good at it, you know, you practice and stuff, but too much of it, then all the ideas start going dead and they don't flow anymore. So taking a little break, I find every now and then I come back and the ideas, like I'm just pumped. I can't wait. They're there. They're ready to come out on paper. And speaking of creative, Jim, you are very creative. He's my brother-in-law and he takes old pieces of furniture that people are like discarding, getting rid of, and he turns them into these amazing he refinishes them and turns them into these amazing like nightstands and it just he's really good at it. You've always been handy like that, Jim. All right, now we can go ahead and glue this on our card. And I'm just going to use liquid glue to do that. And speaking of the nightstands, Jim, I'm serious this time. I really do need to get some because we are about to paint our bedroom and get new furniture and I'm still wanting them. I don't have a decent nightstand and I've always wanted one that I can have a lamp on and when I'm done reading I can just put my book right there next to me instead of dropping it on the floor. <laughs> you take breaks too now and then Sharon. Yeah, I just I think it's a good idea. Look at me advocating not stamping. What am I thinking? What am I thinking? Okay, we're not done with this yet. So see these little flower sprays in here? I took this one right here. And I used Stampin' Right markers. So I used Magenta Madness, Coastal Cabana, and or excuse me, Magenta Madness, Bermuda Bay, and Granny Apple Green Stampin' Right markers to color these. And yes, I cut them with my paper snips. <laughs> I did, because I loved a fussy cut. And they're so cute, but you know what? Before we put those on, let's do Wink of Stella. Magic. Sparkling magic in a pen. This one might be a little bit empty, but I've got another one. So did you guys know when you see that your Wink of Stella pen is starting to go dry, there's a tip to refresh it. You can unscrew this like this, and you can take this out with a pair of pliers, this little black part right here. Take it out with your, twi your with a pair of pliers and you can pour a little bit of rubbing alcohol into this barrel, put this black plastic piece back in, screw the top back on, put the cap on, give it a really good shake. And that rubbing alcohol will pick up all of the glitter and sparkle that's stuck to the edges inside the barrel there, and it'll refresh it for you. And you can extend its life that way. 
And if another tip too, if you see that it's not coming out so easily for you, actually on the barrel, it actually says push. You can just give it a little squeeze and it'll put more down into the tip there so that you can color with it. It's almost like painting actually, because it's a, it's a paint brush. Oh, this is so relaxing. Oh, so relaxing. There we go. Can't forget the sparkle. Okay, now I'm going to glue these flowers on. I'm just going to put the tiniest of dots of liquid glue there. And I'm sticking them randomly on my umbrella. I just love that little burst of color that these little flowers give to the umbrellas. There you go. Something sparkly, something bright, something shiny. And don't forget to stamp your envelope to match your card. Oh yeah, the Wink of Stella. Yeah, Sharon, that's one of those tools that you're looking at something and going, it needs something. Bring out the Wink of Stella. That's exactly what your card needs, right? Yeah, so easy to apply too. So that is project number one. Oh, you know what, on the first look at I actually tied it in a knot in this card. This one I tied it in a bow. Okay, so see, you can do it either way. If you feel bow challenged, go for the knot because it still looks just as good, right? Okay, let's try the scrappy strip technique now. I'm gonna get have to get my paper trimmer out for this one, and this is what it looks like. Now, okay, I'm gonna confess, I did use retired paper. This is what is it called? Tropical Oasis. It's from the last mini catalog but again the whole concept behind this was to use up paper scraps and that's what I had scraps of so that's what I'm using but you know you can use any scraps holiday paper would be a really good use of this and you can mass produce cards with this easily using that technique you can use it with colored cardstock strips and then take your favorite stamp and stamp over the background. So there's lots of possibilities with this technique here. And again, it was from the Bertucci's. They're Australian, an Australian Stampin' Up! demonstrator, husband and wife team. Okay, and I'll show you how to do it. And the really great thing about this is there's no preciseness required. No measuring. That's right. So this is soft suede. Five and a half by eight and a half. Scored down the middle at four and a quarter. Soft suede, I used to use this color all the time, all the time, and I haven't used it in a while, so it was time to bring it back out. Then I have a piece of Pretty Peacock, and this one measures five and a quarter inches by four inches, and here's what I'm going to do. Where are my paper snips? There they are. I'm going to take my paper snips, and I'm going to snip a little diagonal cut in each corner, and you'll see why. I'm going to do that, why I did this in a minute. Okay, set this aside. Next, what I'm going to do is I have this piece, now this is also a retired color, it's powder pink, and I have it measuring five and a quarter by four inches also. But this is gonna get, this is gonna get trimmed down. I made it a little bit larger than I thought I needed because I would rather have the extra space to work with. So, okay, now we're going to bring out our trimmer and our paper scraps. And I'm going to actually put my trimmer this or this way. No, actually, I'm doing it this way with the, the cutting bar at the top. Just so it's easier to see what I want to do. I'm going to slide my blade over, okay? This trimmer, seriously, it's like almost 20 years old. And so for sentimental reasons, I can't part with it. I just can't part with it. It was the very first thing I bought when I got into scrapbooking. And so I just, I know Stampin' Up! has a paper trimmer. It worked really good, got rave reviews. But I just can't part with something that I bought 20 years ago that's still working perfectly good. Although you can see my numbers are totally worn off, right? But who needs to measure anyways, right? So I've got this, this piece of designer series paper and I'm going to slide it up in here. But I'm going to tilt it a little bit so that one side is higher than the other. So it's not in there quite evenly. And then I'm going to lower the cutting bar and I'm going to cut the strap or the, the strap, the strip. So you see how it's a little bit wonky? That's what makes this scrappy strip technique so fun. 
and you don't have to measure it. Now I'm going to cut two pieces of each of these pattern papers. So now instead of raising it up this direction, I'm going to go the opposite direction of what I just cut. And I'm going to raise up this side. Lower the bar and cut. And because it's designer series paper, you have two sides that you can use. And now I'm going to move on to my next pattern and I'm going to repeat this process. Okay. You don't measure. Remember, you don't measure. You want these strips to be all different widths. And I promise they will fit together. Oh, my dog. She heard my husband come in from his little porch office and she thinks that somebody's here visiting us. So yeah, my husband is still working from home. No end date in sight. I love having him work from home, but he's ready to go back into the office to see his coworkers. So, although part of me likes not packing a lunch every day too. I find lunch is so stressful to pack. I don't know why. I cook breakfast, I cook lunch, or dinner, but when it comes to packing a lunch, I have no idea what to pack. I don't get it. I don't get why I have so much trouble with that. Now my one daughter is going back to college in a week and a half, and my other two are returning to high school um, at the end of August, like normal, completely normal, and I'm glad, I'm so glad that it's normal, right? Okay, now let's pull out this powder pink piece, and you're gonna need some liquid glue. We're gonna start arranging these now. Now, if you are not going to trim down this piece when you're done, you wanna make sure that you have a straight edge on both the left side and the right side. You want those pieces to be perfectly, you know, to be straight like that. If you're gonna go ahead and trim this piece down when you're done laying your strips on, you don't have to worry about that particular quirk there. So, you know, all you have to do is just run. I'm gonna work this direction because I think it's easier. Just run a thin line of glue down your paper there and lay your strip on there. Now, um, whoops. these strips are longer than my paper. It's just easier to do it that way. Now, I'm actually going to have a little border in between these pieces. I'm not going to put them right up against each other. And the other thing, too, is I'm going to put them in opposite directions. So this one is going from widest to skinny that direction. Now I'm going to go widest to skinny in the opposite direction and I'm going to lay this down leaving a little border in between these two designer series paper pieces. And I'm going to run it a little bit parallel to that so you can see. Is this, this, you guys can already tell this is going to look good. Sharon, I'm just now seeing your comment. Are you talking about the trimmer, I assume? You said you have the one that retired. The new one is okay, but you still love the other one. Yeah, do you have a supply of blades for that? Because that was the one thing I thought was kind of bummer about that is you can't get the blades for it anymore. And they sold out so fast. Everybody wanted them. I don't know. I mean... I'm just the type of person, if something works, I just stick with it. I just, I just keep going on with it. So and we're just going to keep adding these, you know, paper trimmers, I think are the most hotly debated topic in the paper crafting community. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I mean, the amount of opinions for that is crazy. I'm actually going to pull my trimmer back out because I want some more pieces from this pattern. I just realized I don't have any, so and I want some of those. So I'm going to do a couple more. Um, yeah, I feel like the per perfect paper trimmer just does not exist out there. And it's, what is it, the holy grail? Would that be an appropriate, um, an appropriate comparison. I feel like it's the holy grail of paper crafting. Some people like guillotine style. Some people like 
um, I don't know what this is called, the, the one like I just did, Rotary or something, I don't know. Everybody has their personal opinion. I like guillotine style. I like it because I don't ever have to get a new blade for it. It just self sharpens every time I use it to cut something. So that's just what I prefer. And I know Stampin' Up! had that cute little mini guillotine one. It was a sign up special during celebration, I think it was. Jane, if you're watching, I know you have it. And people loved it. It was so cute, so adorable. It was easy to put into your bag to go to stamping events and things like that. And they did bring it back for us demonstrators to buy this past month. And I think it sold out super fast. It, it didn't stay on the market very long for us or stay in stock for very long. Okay, we are almost done here. We're getting down to the last few strips. I feel like I need another one of those here. I got it right here. I just love playing with this mix of patterns. On my blog, I did a tutorial for the herringbone technique that also uses strips of paper like this, only they're not cut in the scrappy, wonky style. They're just strips of like maybe quarter inch, half inch cardstock. But that would also be another great technique for using up your paper scraps. Let's do it this way. And because, like I said, I'm trimming this, it's okay. I'm going off my card. I don't need those extra pieces. We're done with that. And I am going to pull out my little guillotine cutter. This one's not stamping up because I bought this a long time ago too. And I'm going to trim off these pieces here. You can use paper snips for it or you can just go in and just cut those off. Sliding them under there and then I'm going to trim my cardstock down even further. Okay, so I got the extras all cut off. You should see the little pile of paper scraps garbage I've got over here. It's growing. Alright, now I want this piece to measure what do I want it to measure? I don't know. I don't even like to measure. Do you know that? We'll say it's about five and five inches by four inches. That'll work. Okay. By four inches. That's right. No, three and three quarters because we want it to fit on our, our mat. Whoop. There we go. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and bring everything in and we're going to put it on our pretty peacock mat. Yeah, the little one was pretty popular, that little mini cutter. Like I said, I, I don't even have that one. Okay. Glue that on there. Now, remember I, we made those little snips at the corners of the pretty peacock piece? That's because I wanted just to do something just a little bit different. I want to curl these up. So I'm just taking my fingernail and I'm curling them up like this. And those little points, little slits I cut on the corners just make it easier for the paper to, to flip up. So it almost makes these scrappy strip panel recessed and I feel like it highlights it a little bit more. This also hides any uneven edges you might have. So it's a great diversionary tactic too in card making. Um, we're gonna wrap some linen. I wanna stamp this first. This is another piece of Timeless Tropical Oasis Designer Series paper. Now here's the thing, I'm using Ornate Thanks. I'm gonna use that giant thank you. I cut mine in half, or I cut them into two words. Do you see that? I took my paper snips and I snipped it because sometimes I wanted it to go like this. I didn't want it to be side by side. But here's the neat thing. This time I do want it side by side, but I can just fit it right back together again, just like that. So why not cut that? And now I'm gonna ink it up with Poppy Parade and I'm gonna stamp it right on this piece. Now I die cut this with the ornate layers die. There's a piece in there that has this really long skinny stitched rectangle and it fit this perfectly. So I went ahead and did that. So yeah, don't be afraid to cut your stamps to make them do what you want them to do. 
And now we're going to put some dimensionals on here. And we are going to wrap linen thread around there. So I got to get those out. We got linen thread. We have got a blend. And I pulled out my bird ballad trinkets. These are retired, but this kind of reminded me of like a palm tree frond. So I'm going to put it on there. So we're going to wrap the linen thread around this card and tie it in a bow. I like that they put this linen thread around these tubes now rather than in the paper cards that they used to come in because they don't get those kinks in them. And I kind of like how they curl from sitting around this tube. Okay, here's another trick. I can never get this to stay tight when I'm tying a bow, so I'm actually going to tie this in a knot. So I tied it once, I'm going to tie it again in a knot, and that'll hold it nice and tight while I tie the bow. Okay, and I'm holding down the knot as I adjust the tails so that the loops don't flip on me as I'm adjusting. Okay, and we trim and I'm going to pull that over a little bit okay now I can go ahead and glue this to my card base so I'm going to add some liquid glue okay thank you Sharon thank you for commenting so much too it makes me feel like I'm not stamping alone here <laughs> By the way, I mailed your card kit. It was mailed it a couple days ago. I think they said it should get there by Friday. So thank you for getting one. I hope you enjoy putting it together. Now, these have little eye holes at the end or eyelets. I don't know what they're called. So I'm actually going to cut a piece of linen thread like this. Now let's see if I can remember how I did this. And I'm going to take my Poppy Parade Stampin' Blend. Let me bring in some scratch paper so I can keep this one fairly clean still. And I'm going to use the brush tip of this one. So just like I use it to color ribbon, I'm actually going to use it to color this piece of linen thread. So did you know you could do that too? But yeah, definitely make sure you have scratch paper under there because you can tell you're going to get it all over. And again, I'm not worried about this being too perfect. All right, you have to just give it a few seconds to dry. Just a few seconds. Um, we can stick this on while we're waiting for it to dry. And let's put this on here. Right over top of that linen thread to kind of hold it in place. All right, now I don't know my knots. I don't know the names of them. But what I'm gonna do is take this piece of linen thread, I'm gonna fold it in half, and I'm gonna thread that rounded end through the front of my metal embellishment. I believe there are metal embellishments in the annual catalog. And I'm gonna pull it through, and the tails I am going to stick through that loop that I created. Oh my goodness, I am like fumble fingers today. There we go. And I'm going to separate these threads. I want this really organic, crazy, loose, free-spirited kind of look. So I'm separating those threads to get that look. And then I'm going to, I meant to do it around this, but we're going to use a glue dot to adhere that. So it'll be just fine. Stick the glue dot on the back of the metal embellishment. I'm going to put it right there beside the thank you. And I'm going to go ahead and just trim this so it's not all over the place, hanging off the card. Separate it a little bit more. There we go. I just add like I just like a little bit of color and different type of material or texture it adds to this. So, okay, so that's the two cards I 
made today. I hope you guys like them. That scrappy strip technique, really super easy, no measuring required. All you need is your paper trimmer. So I will have the project sheet for these so that you know what I used and you know the measurements of the things that do have measurements. I will put that in the link or in the description to this live. And I'll also have it on my blog. And watch my blog tomorrow for the details about my BOGO retired product sale that starts August 6th. So thank you guys. If you loved this video, I would appreciate you sharing it. Um, and if you want to order anything, just go to shopwithnicole.stampinup.net. And I will see you guys next Thursday. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so happy to be back at this. All right, guys. I will talk to you later. Bye.